<coughs> Sorry. What if you could explain like Steve Jobs? I've worked in bananas, I've worked in peaches, I've worked in grapes, but you never really taste it. Explain like the innovator who made us understand and buy things we'd never heard of before. And what if you could do it by simply using the same three phrases he uses? Spoiler alert, you can. And in a moment, I'm gonna show you how ChatGPT can remove the need of being a creative genius and make this super easy for you. After publishing my last video on what we can learn from the best educational YouTubers, I spent three days watching Steve Jobs interviews and Steve Jobs talks. Because while those YouTubers explain really complex topics like history and science, Steve Jobs had to explain things that didn't exist before. A thousand songs in your pocket, impossibly small. How can you use his methods in your own context? What is a kickstart phrase? And how do you explain like the great Steve Jobs without being a master of rhetorics? Luckily, you won't need beautiful slides, blue jeans or black turtlenecks. No, Steve Jobs was one of a kind, an incredible presenter. But much of what made him present so powerfully was the way he explained. After days of studying this epic educator, I found that he uses the same three techniques over and over again. The first technique has nothing to do with bananas. It was like a picture of a, of a banana. Or steam baths. So the basement was, it was like a steam bath. But it has something to do with how he uses analogy again and again. Steve Jobs is a master of tying the unfamiliar or unknown to something we all understand. In this interview, the interviewer doesn't quite get the idea of object-based software. So Steve Jobs explains it using a historical reference. Is this on a grander scale the equivalent of calling up a macro on the computer? Uh, it's even much beyond that. It's sort of interchangeable parts, much like the Industrial Revolution brought to, to, to the manufacturing of hard goods. An analogy is a comparison of two things that share some element. And it's not just for explanation. That factory doesn't get written off the minute I build it. That factory is an asset on my books, just like cash in the bank is. It's also for clarification, like in the banana clip. I, I, I don't think there's anything inherently evil in consulting. I think that you do get a broad cut at companies, but it's very thin. It's like a picture of a, I, would, I could use, I'm a vegetarian, so I wouldn't use steak, but it's like a picture of a, of a banana. Uh, <laughs> it, you might get a very accurate picture, but it's only two dimensional. And without the experience of actually doing it, you never get three-dimensional. So you might have a lot of pictures on your walls. You can show it off to your friends. You can say, oh, look, I've worked in bananas. I've worked in peaches. I've worked in grapes. But you never really taste it. He could have stopped after simply stating how he sees consulting versus working inside one company. But he makes his point stick by linking it to something visual, two-dimensional pictures of fruit. And it's even a bit funny. That's, that's what I think. When was the last time I explained something and, and people laughed and applauded? Creative analogies can do that. And if you don't see yourself as a creative, you can let the AI text generator, ChatGPT, help you come up with good analogies. I want to explain like Steve Jobs. He uses creative analogies to explain things, come up with five analogies for the following. Something that's broad and superficial versus narrow and deep. And now you've got five powerful analogies for explaining that relation including reasons why these comparisons make sense. It also works if you don't want to compare two things, but simply explain one thing. Something that is very hard, complex, and takes a lot of time. Or make it about a concrete situation you're in right now. What are five simple analogies for making my colleagues use a new tool? Now you have some good suggestions but sometimes it's hard to figure out how to go from general talk to analogy. And this is where Steve Jobs' kickstart phrases really help. He starts his analogies with the words, it's like, it's like a picture of a, just like, just like cash in the bank is, or much like. It's much like the industrial revolution brought to, to, to the manufacturing of hard goods. Whenever you want to use an analogy, explain your topic in general terms first, use the kickstart phrase, it's like, and then start to describe the analogy that either you or ChatGPT came up with. But even though analogies are powerful in helping us understand through the logic of comparison, logic isn't what makes us remember. Steve Jobs uses a technique we humans have used for millions of years. The second technique he uses to explain clearly is one of the oldest tricks in the book. 
I remember uh, reading an article when I was about 12 years old. I think it might have been Scientific American. And even though Steve Jobs wouldn't say so himself. My memory's not that good. I don't remember anecdotes and things like that, so I... I kept finding examples of his ability to lean into small anecdotes and stories from his own life. Uh, I remember with the laser writer, we built the world's first small laser printers, you know. Since the first cave paintings, we humans have told stories to each other. Because they are entertaining, yes, but also easy to remember. Steve Jobs knows this, so when he delivered his commencement speech at Stanford, he knew the graduates wouldn't remember a long list of life advice. So he did something else. Today, I want to tell you three stories from my life. That's it. No big deal. Just three stories. He uses the kickstart phrase, I remember, to build the bridge from general talk to storytelling. Well, as an example, I have some children. And, uh, four I, children, I and I shoot some footage. And I, I remember making my first iMovie where I could edit the clips together. This phrase is key to unlocking story in our own work. Whenever we've talked enough in general terms, like what one can do with iMovie. You can send it to your family, you can send it to your friends, you can put it on the internet. It's time to link that to a story. And it was, I showed it to my wife and she started crying. All you need is a few details about an experience you've had, and then ChatGPT can unfold that into a story. Like when I recommend my friends to start a side project, I need to anchor that general advice to something concrete. ChatGPT gets a few facts about my own first side project, and then it helps me write it out. And I can then choose and use the bits I like. Steve Jobs' explanations consist of a lot of general information, spiced up with a few analogies here and there. And now a few stories get added in to take the whole thing to another level. But. One ingredient is still missing to perfect the dish. Analogies and stories will take us far, but to make this a home run, we need something that ties the whole thing together. I remember when I founded my animation video agency back in college, I thought the animations were the value I provided. But after the first 10 customers, I realized how important the scripts were for the quality of our videos. So I studied commercial script writing from the world of advertisements and I stumbled upon this formula that goes state it, explain it, repeat it. Steve Jobs must have studied the same thing because he does this perfectly. The third technique he uses to explain clearly is about that last part, repeating it. So we are incredibly excited about the products. I saw this again and again. He explains something using analogies and storytelling, and then he concludes with a short one or two line recap. You're trying to climb a mountain with a whole party of people. A lot of stuff to bring up the mountain. So one person can't do it. Um, he always uses the same kickstart phrase, which is really simple this time. So the resources that we're investing are equal or greater than we have been. It's just a single word. So. We really like what's coming down the pike there. So who knows what the future will bring, but we're extremely happy with the PowerPC working very closely with IBM and Motorola. It's like pearls on a string, one point, one analogy, one story after another, and then he ties the knot at the end by saying, so, and then he repeats the main points. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. The shorter the recap is, the more powerful it becomes. So keep looking, don't settle. It is super hard to boil down all your talk to one strong finishing point. So let's see if ChatGPT can help us with this too. Imagine I've written a section of a video script and I want to conclude on that part before moving on. I copy this chunk of text into ChatGPT and ask it to give me five suggestions for how to conclude on this section with a short, simple, and super clear sentence that begins with the word, so. I'd say these sound a lot like Steve Jobs' micro conclusions. So, use analogies to make people understand, use stories to make them relate, and use conclusions to make them remember. If you like this distillation of an epic educator, subscribe to the channel to see more videos like it. For example, this one about what we can learn from the best educators on YouTube.